Hi, and welcome back to the Shure Whiteboard Sessions. Today's topic is going to be what spectrum works best for a given application. For radio microphones and in-ear monitors to work properly, we need access to clean spectrum, and that much is well known. What's less well known is what spectrum works best for a given application. And now, unfortunately, we can't just use any spectrum. In theory, there's a lot of spectrum available, but over the last 50 years, radio mics and in-ears have primarily been using the VHF and UHF bands of spectrum. And I'll explain why that's the case here in this next bit. Different parts of spectrum, such as VHF, UHF, 1.8 gigahertz, 2.4 gig, or the DECT bands, just to name a few of the bands that are actually available for wireless mics and IMs, have different performance characteristics. The most important one of these to understand really is propagation. And what I mean with that is how good can a given frequency or the wavelength penetrate through surfaces and walls. Because of course, if I'm using a wireless microphone on stage, I wanna make sure that my signal remains stable at all times and I have a good, nice operating area. One thing that radio frequencies have in common with sound is the fact that the lower the frequency is, the longer the actual wavelength is. Or in, or in contrast, the higher the frequency is, the shorter the wavelength. And for us to actually understand that, we also need to understand the wave equation. So I'll explain that to you here. We'll take C as the constant, or the speed of light, uh, and that equals the length times the frequency. So if we do a couple of calculations here, the speed of light, um, for reference, is 300 million meters per second. Um, so one of the first things we really need to understand here is that when it comes to radio mics, we're not talking about the speed of sound, rather we're dealing with the speed of light. So let's use, let's make mathematics simple here. And if we want to find out what the wavelength of 600 megahertz, if that were the frequency that I was using is, what we would do is we would take the speed of light and we would divide that by the frequency. So in this case, we would divide that by 600 million, which happens to be 600 megahertz, and you'd notice that that equals 0.5 meters. So one cycle of 600 megahertz is a half a meter long. And that's a nice chunky wavelength that allows us the ability to transmit and penetrate through a variety of surfaces and walls. And that, that really is what gives us the operating range that we want. Of course, in contrast, the higher we go in frequency, the shorter that wavelength becomes. So, you know, let, let's pick a frequency that's way up there. For instance, you know, 10 gigahertz that frequency or that wavelength is so short that it wouldn't actually even be able to penetrate things like, you know, a, a tiny bit of curtain or a very thin wall. And of course, that's not very usable for professional applications. Over the last 50 years, the bulk of wireless microphones, and again, in-ears, have operated in the so-called VHF and UHF bands of spectrum. VHF stands for very high frequency, UHF standing for ultra high frequency. So again, if we go back to that wave equation, uh, which dictates the length of that wavelength, and we look at this, some of the systems that previously operated were here in the VHF range, and you'd notice that the wavelengths were nice and long. So again, the propagation and that operating range performance was exceptionally good. What we really didn't get in VHF is actually enough spectrum to cater for larger events. And I think we'd all agree that over the past decades, the usage of wireless microphones and in-ears has gone noticeably up. So what that means is we need more spectrum to be available to us to be able to get all of those channels operating stable night after night. So more or less the industry today and the bulk of it makes wireless microphones and in-ear uh, in monitors in the UHF bands. Um, and really, specifically, it's the UHF bands 4 and 5, as they're referred to, starting at 470 megahertz and moving up into the mid-800s. And you'll see we still retain excellent propagation characteristics, but we now have a lot more spectrum available to us. So to best understand how we actually operate in these so-called UHF bands, we also need to understand who we share the spectrum with. And again, going back over the past several decades, we, users of wireless mics and in-ears, have always shared the UHF bands with terrestrial television. And previously, this was in the form of analog TV, 
and today as we'd all know it, it comes in the form of digital television or DTV. So just give you a theoretical example. Um, we have the UHF bands here starting at 470 meg, moving up into the 800 megahertz range. In a given geographic area, and we'll use London for instance, we will have these DTV channels that sit here and they look to to give you an idea, something like this. But once in a while, there'll be space in between. And the way wireless microphones operate is if that these parts of UHF spectrum were occupied by digital television today, we use these spaces in between that are referred to as white spaces. The reason this is important to understand is that we operate on a second tier to television and also, it's important to make sure that your wireless microphones are programmed into these white spaces. The good thing about this is that I would describe this as us having interference that is predictable. We know what the other users are out there, and we use the space in between those TV channels to safely operate our wireless microphones. The UHF bands are the preferred choice for professional users. And what I mean with that are professional tour knacks to television to theater, basically anywhere where you have a large number of wireless channels that need to run safely night after night. And that's again why this type of users prefer the UHF bands. Now of course, if you're a smaller type user and your channel counts are smaller, there are other parts of spectrum that you can also use. I'll give you a brief explanation of each of these bands and uh, we might as well start with 1.8 because it's the next one here in terms of going up in frequency. 1.8 was actually a recent announcement in the UK and today the 1.8 gigahertz band or specifically 1785 to 1800 megahertz is available for the usage of radio microphones. Now what we need to understand is that because it's a slightly higher frequency it means that wavelength is a little bit shorter, so we suffer a little bit from propagation, but again, in, in most, most applications and situations, it is absolutely as good as to use as some of the UHF bands that we mentioned earlier. The 2.4 band, uh, I guess the most uh, common user of this would be Wi-Fi. You know, most buildings today, including our households, have Wi-Fi networks, so probably the most important thing to bear in mind with the 2.4 band is that we share this with other unlicensed users such as Wi-Fi. Now, most of the systems that are available for 2.4 are very clever and intuitive, meaning when you turn them on, they're able to scan and detect other users in these Wi-Fi or 2.4 bands and allocate a clean frequency for your wireless transmitter and receiver to operate in. Another benefit of the 2.4 bands is that it's available globally and that it is license free. The last band we have up here uh, is DECT, or the Digital Enhanced Cordless Telecommunications Band, as it's known in the UK. Um, this is also available for use uh, for wireless microphones. There's, there's not particularly many systems available in this, and typically the systems that are used or do use this band are more the installed variety. Again, some of the benefits of this DECT band are the fact that it is globally available, it's license-free, and the systems are very intuitive and clever, again, in the sense that they're able to look at the spectrum, do their own scans, and allocate your system a clean frequency for the transmitters and the receivers. Thank you for joining us this week. I do hope you found that useful. Uh, next week's topic is going to cover what's happening to the UHF bands, not just in the UK, but on a global basis. Uh, and to subscribe to these videos, please go to losingyourvoice.co.uk. We need access to clean spectrum. I <laughs> forgot.